Hi, little goats. It's good to see you again. It's Alec Williams here, your reading friend. Now then, it's getting towards the time, I think, when some of you are going back. Maybe the year sixes went this week? I don't know. And maybe others will go soon. Let's hope so and hope you all get back safely and enjoy yourselves. This video is for people back at school, but it's also for people at home. And I hope you'll enjoy it. Before we have the two stories which I've got for you today, let's have a look at those picture books to see if they've changed again. Up here, look, is Giraffes Can't Dance. Now, you might know that one. It's quite a well-known one about Gerald the giraffe. And he just feels silly when he tries to dance. But he's really just wanting the right music, I think, to help him. This next one, I wonder if you recognise the cover for that one. That's one by Julia Donaldson, the one who wrote the Gruffalo story, and it's called Stick Man. I think it's one of my favourites of her books, the stick man who lives with his wife and his children in the family tree. Below, that's a book called I Want My Hat Back, about a bear who can't find his hat. Maybe you could try some of those in the library, uh, or maybe have a look out for them. Uh, maybe somebody, some friends might have it. Have an ask around, see what you can find. We've got two stories today. One is perhaps a younger story. It's a story from East Africa, from the Maasai tribe. And the other story is a very short one, which I'm going to read to you for older children. And then maybe we'll have a couple of poems in between. Now, you may remember that a couple of sessions ago, I told you a story about Ma Liang, the Chinese girl. And I told you it was from this book here. Storytelling with Children, which is by my storytelling friend Andrew Wright. This first story is another one from that book, and it's about a caterpillar. Now, you can draw a caterpillar quite easily, and I'm going to see if I can draw one for you. This is a piece of card and a pen. And you need five oranges and two cherries. Let me show you. Here. I shall show you the oranges. One, two, three, four, five. They're a bit wobbly, aren't they? I've done one big orange and some small ones. Oh, and then you need two cherries. The two cherries can go here in the big orange, which makes the caterpillars feelers and tenny. And then we can join them up like this. To make his wiggly body and maybe we could give him some little hairs because sometimes you can get very hairy caterpillars can't you there we are here's our caterpillar and he's the star of the story really um there is something else in the story though which i should mention last time you saw me holding a milk bottle this time i'm holding a bucket there are all sorts of things you can do with the bucket, as you might know. You can pour water into it. You can wash the floor with it. If you're very, very silly, you can put it on your head. But I'm not going to do that. What I am going to do is to speak into it. Because when you speak into a bucket like this, it makes your voice sound all big and large. So this is what the mouse does in the story. This is a story called Mouse goes to Hare's house. See if you like it. Mouse visits Hare's house. Hare isn't at home. Mouse knocks on the door and calls, Hare, are you at home? Hare doesn't come. So Mouse opens the door and goes in to Hare's house. Later, Hare comes home and she's frightened. Her door is open. Why is my door open? She shouts. Who's who's there? And Mouse picks up a bucket and shouts in a loud voice. I am strong. I am a famous soldier. I can fight elephants. I can throw 
Hippos in the sky! Well, obviously, Hare is frightened. She runs out of the house and she meets Fox. Fox, Fox, there's a monster in my house. Please help me. Fox is a bit frightened. Fox goes to Hare's house. He opens the door and shouts, Who's there? And Mouse grabs the bucket and shouts in a loud voice, I am strong! I am a famous soldier! I can fight elephants! I can throw hippos in the sky! Fox runs out of the house. There's a monster in the house! Hare and Fox tell Elephant. Elephant is frightened too. Elephant goes to Hare's house. She opens the door and she shouts, Who's there? In a big elephant voice. Who's there? Bows picks up the bucket and shouts again. I am strong. I am a famous soldier. I can fight you. I can throw hippos in the sky. Elephant runs out of the house. There's, there's a monster in the house. Hare and fox and elephant tell Hippo. Hippo is frightened too. Hippo goes to Hare's house. He opens the door and he shouts, Who's, who's there? Mouse shouts in a loud voice in the bucket. I am strong. I'm a famous soldier. I can fight elephants. I can throw you in the sky. Hippo runs out of the house. There's a monster in the house. Well, in the end, Hare and Fox and Elephant and Hippo tell Caterpillar. Caterpillar is frightened, but he's brave. Caterpillar goes to Hare's house. He opens the door and he shouts, Who's there? Mouse shouts in a loud voice in the bucket. I am strong. I'm a famous soldier. I can fight elephants. I can throw hippos into the sky. Caterpillar gulps, takes a deep breath, and then he shouts back even louder. I'm the strongest of all creatures. I jump over rivers. I fly over mountains. I'm afraid of nobody. Don't make me angry. Come out now. Mouse appears very frightened. All right, all right, all right. Don't, don't hurt me. I'm only a mouse. Mouse comes slowly out of the house. He's crying. Please, please don't hurt me. And all the animals can't help but laugh. That night they have a party for Caterpillar. Caterpillar, bravest of them all. So that's the East African story about mouse and something you can do with a bucket. You could always try it, couldn't you? Seeing if a bucket will make your voice extra loud. I promised you a couple of poems. Over here, I've got a book called I Bet I Can Make You Laugh. And it's poems which have been collected by a band called Josh Siegel. And it's by poems by him and poems by his friends. This one, I must be careful, this is about a teacher. And it's a bit rude. It's called, Our Teacher is a Caveman. <coughs> I might get into, tr into trouble with this, mightn't I, later on. Here goes. Our teacher is a caveman with a long black scraggy beard. Although he is our fave man, he's wacky, wild and weird. His limited vocabulary, though great at ancient history, he doesn't go past 1 BC. Our teacher is a caveman. We call him Mr. Ugg. He's hairy and he's scary, and he waves a wooden club. He has a bath quite rarely. He's puzzled by the internet, and he keeps a pterodactyl pet that really does confuse the vet. Our teacher is a caveman. He lives deep in the forest with his cave wife and cave child. He shows us how to sharpen spears 
and how two sticks make fire. Some say his brain is very small. Won't use whiteboards, draws on walls. Come and meet the school Neanderthal. Our teacher is a caveman. He loves to watch the Ice Age films on TV every night. How did he ever get the job? He cannot read or write. When teaching maths, he counts with rocks. He owns a sundial, but no clocks. Check out his woolly mammoth socks. Our teacher is a caveman. Who cares if he's Paleolithic? We all think he's terrific. Our teacher is a caveman. It's a poem by a man called Neil Zetter. And at the bottom there is the picture of the caveman teacher. <gasps> Ooh, can you dare read another one? What is this one? Oh, I, this one is about how sometimes you don't understand a word when people are saying it to you. And it says, this is how it starts. On Sunday mornings, mum and dad have a lion. What do you think they mean, really? Yeah, they have a lion. But this time, the boys heard it wrong. On Sunday mornings, mum and dad have a lion. They say to us, we've been working hard all week. Please don't disturb us in the morning. We need a lion. When they get up, the lion is always gone. I've never even seen mum and dad's lion. In fact, the next time they have a lion on a Sunday morning, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to call to it. I'm going to stand outside mum and dad's room and I'm going to shout, Rawr! <laughs> Mum and dad have a, a lion. Deary me. This is a short book called Short Two. There was a book called Short, and this is called Short Two. And by the way, there are quite a few of these books. You'll find ones called Short and Shocking, Short and Scary, and they have a lot of short, short stories in them. You can see by the contents list how many stories there are, so you know that some of them are going to be very short. And this one, which I think might interest the older children more, this is a slightly scary story called Hairy. That's the title. It's called Hairy. Let me read it to you. It's not so easy to get holiday work round here, so I was pleased when the zoo lady rang and said they got a job for me after all. I went round at once and the lady led me through a gloomy concrete tunnel, you know, like, a, like an underpass, right into the gorilla cage. It, w it was empty, though. Poor old Goran the gorilla, the lady said. He's in our hospital. What's wrong with him? His age. We need a young gorilla, really. Goran just sits up there on that branch all day, holding that swinging rope. Boring, I said. I know, said the lady, but even a boring gorilla is a big attraction. The zoo lady smiled at me. What? I said. We've got this gorilla suit. Would you sit up in that tree so at least the kids can have something to look at? Maybe two goes, two shifts a day? Three hours each, with a lunch break in between. We'll pay you. Hmm, sounds good, I said, grinning. Not your, not your usual holiday job. Next morning, I went round and put on my gorilla suit. I climbed up to the branch and sat on it, and hundreds of visitors were soon pressing their faces against the bars of my cage. Talk about boring. Before long, I was bored out of my head. I know what, I thought, and I began to, I began to scratch under my armpits and uh, thump my hairy chest and yelp a bit. Ow, ow, ow. The 
kids watching thought it was great. So then I grabbed the tatty old rope, wrapped myself around it, and I swung across my cage. The kids loved that even more. They laughed and they whispered to each other and they whooped. In the cage alongside mine, there was a mangy or mangy old lion. I could tell he was getting impatient with my antics because he kept pacing round and round and roaring. I kept swinging, though, higher and higher. And when I swung over towards the lion, I pushed off his bars with my feet to swing me back again. The kids and their parents couldn't get enough of it. They kept laughing and yelling for more. <laughs> I swung even higher then. And that that's when I missed the bars. I flew right between them, lost my grip on the tatty old rope. And I dropped into the lion's cage. Somehow I scrambled up and I ran towards the visitors, crying out, Help! Help! I'm not a... I'm not a... The lion sprang at me from behind. He knocked me flat and he lowered his huge head right down over me. Shut up, he said, in a hoarse voice. Shut up, said the man in the suit. Or they'll dump us both. Neither of us will have a job. Well, I wonder if you were worried about him being eaten up by the lion. Two of them both in suits. It's been good to see you again. I hope you're still coping with being at home if you are. and looking forward to being back at school, which I'm sure you will be soon. In the meantime, keep reading and uh, take care. Bye bye.